Hi guys, I'm here today with another tutorial or a how-to for you um, of how to paint using watercolour um, a cute little um, blue tit. It's semi-realistic, not 100% realistic, um, just a cute sort of stylized um, version of a blue tit. Um, I just thought you might um, enjoy this little tutorial, so um, yeah. Okay, so let's look at what you need. You'll need some um, watercolour paper. Um, size is entirely up to you, depending on how big you want to um, make your piece. Um, you'll need a brush. I'm just using um, a round, um, you know, just a, this is actually just a cheapy um, brush. It's not a, nothing too particularly fancy. Uh, two pots of water, one for cleaning your brush and one for fresh clean water to use on your watercolours. You will need watercolours because obviously this is a watercolour tutorial. I use the um, Windsor & Newton set um, and I just love them. There's a bit of glue, a bit of glue. I don't know what that's doing in there. And um, you may want to have a piece of tissue or a rag on hand in case you need to blot up any um, any excess colour. So let's get cracking. Okay, so I'm going to work in um, in portrait for my little birdie, and I'm just sort of thinking about where I want um, everything to uh, to be. I probably want the head to be around here and the body to be around here. So we're not sketching at all. We're going to go straight in with the watercolour. And we want to kind of keep it quite, um, quite loose and flowing. Um, you know, we want it to look sketchy. want it to look very... Um, you know, watercolor, watercolor esque. <laughs> is that a real? Is that a real term? I don't know. Um, so yeah. So if you did my tutorial with the um, girl with the galaxy hair, we're going to be doing the same sort of wet in wet technique as that, and that means that wherever um, wherever on your paper there's water or it's wet the paint will bleed and merge into each other um, so we need to be mindful of that because we may end up with a big muddy mess so we want to control to a certain degree um, where the paint goes but um, we also want it to be a little um, free form so just bear that in mind when um, when you're painting before you go and mix your colours just bear in mind that if it's wet it is all going to run. So, most important thing, cup of tea, don't put your water brush in your tea, which I so very often do, very, very often do. Okie dokie. So, let's just get our um, brush wet. Okay, so I've got a wet brush, and what I want to do is I want to start off by doing the body, and I'm going to just do two... Um, you might not be able to see this yet because it's just water. But I'm doing two um, kind of petal shapes. I'm starting with like an overly round at the top and then just bringing the petal down. And you'll be able to see that when I put start putting some um, colour in. It's very hard to see. I'm struggling to see it myself. And then I'm just going to go in with quite a bright yellow. And I'm going to go over this entire um, body. These are basically the wings and I'm going to go over this entirely with um, yellow. Don't worry if it's too bright. We can always um, add more colour to that as we go. You know, we can always change the colour down if it's too bright or what have you. As it goes on. Sorry, I need broke into song then. Do you have to watch when I'm painting that I... Uh, I don't break into song, I'm notorious for it. Um, 
which is just as well you don't live at my house because I just sing every time I paint. <laughs> oh dear. So, okie dokie. There we go. So we've got kind of like a, do you remember Pac-Man? It's kind of like an upside down Pac-Man, you know, <laughs> with his mouth open. Um, that's what I like to think. So there you go. Draw an upside down Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm um, just rounding off the mouth area of the Pac-Man um, because it is the um, the bottom of the bird after all, and I don't necessarily want it to be um, to be really pointy. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute because um, I want it wet, but I don't want it massively, massively wet. Um, I know that sounds really strange, but um, I want it to soak into the paper just a little bit, otherwise water will just go absolutely everywhere. Um, so while that's kind of drying a little bit, I'm going to think about the head. So I want, um, I want a nice blue for the head. We can always darken this up as we go on. And I'm visualising here, so he's got his shoulders and then his head's going to come up in like a little circle. So I'm just going to draw in with my brush not using any pencil here just a curvy line that's going to be the top of his head and he has like a little cap on the top of his head so I'm going to just fill that in and I've got some colour down and I've got my shape there now and I'm going to go back to that later to kind of darken it up and embellish that a bit further but my starting block is there um, and I'm just going to take some more of that blue and I'm going to draw in the rest of his head there on the side just so that we start to get some shape in his head and I'm going to bring that down a bit into, into his neck. And that's going green because it's mixing with the yellow, but that's fine, we're not worried about that. And I'm going to put a little bit of blue on his, on his breast there. Wash my brush. And I'm just going to let that sit just for a little bit again, just so that it um, doesn't get too wet. Um, I'm going to go for a purple, a little bit of purple, which I'm going to put on his, on his breast, just to kind of get rid of some of that greeny colour. And also, blue tits do have a little bit of purple in them as well. So, okay, just a bit of purple on his breast there. If it, as it mixes with the yellow, it's going brown a little bit. That I do not mind in the slightest because we're going to put some brown on him anyway. Clean off my brush again. So you always want to try and have two pots of water so that one that you can clean your brush off with and that water stays dirty. And then a... Uh, another pot with clean water so that you can pick up the clean water to put back into your paint palette um, and I'm going to go with a darker blue and I'm just going to go back over some of this blue that I already did because it's not quite dark enough for for my like so I'm just going to darken that off a little bring that down And then I'm going to start to sweep that across his neck there. I'm going to do it slightly. And I'm going to be going over this again in with black. So I'll wash my wash my brush and get some black. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. Let you know if I am, just stop the video and then kind of go back to where you where you need to. Um, the black I'm just going to bring down the sides of the body just to give him a bit of definition. I'm not going all the way to the bottom though, just at the top and I'm going to let that wick in with the um, the yellow. This uh, this effect here is called wicking. Oh, I put that in my... Um, yeah, it's just called wicking so and we're quite happy for that to happen. And then we'll just bring that down the body there and just let that do its thing 
and then I want to bring some across his neck and let that all join together like so and I want to get a little bit more black and I want to bring um, so over three quarters of the way from the left or a quarter in from the right that was probably an easier way of saying it. I just want to bring that paint up in a curvy motion to about halfway across his head and then I want to go across as well in a bit of a line it doesn't matter if it's not very accurate and so I've got kind of like a bit of a bit of a T there so that starts to form where his eye and his beak are going to go um, at a later stage a later stage there so I'm going to wash my brush again and I'm going to go with a bit more blue because I want to add a bit more blue into here that I want to kind of get it into a nice bluey tone. We might have to do that once it's dry a bit. I want this to be bluey black. With a, you know, like black with a little bit of a, a blue hue. So I'm just adding some blue in there, which you'll probably notice a bit more once it's dried. And then I want to look at the bottom a little bit here. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of grey. Obviously grey is just black and white. So I'm just going to mix that up on my, on my palette, which obviously you don't need me to show you because it's just black and white mixed together to a grey that you that you um, find pleasing. I want it to be quite a light grey and I always go light because you can always add to it to make it darker. And I don't want my brush too wet here um, but I'm just going to go into this middle bit of the breast here because I want don't want it to be stark white and I also want to feather the um, oh, that's a really funny feather um, feather the edges of the yellow area a little bit so I want it to blend slightly but not too much um, and I also want to put some grey on his face at some point but um, I'm going to wait till that's just a little bit drier um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of brown and I want to put some brown just on the bottom and I'm going to let that wick Just this is where you know the bottom of the of the body is and we're getting ready for the legs and I just don't want that yellow to be like really really bright yellow so I'll just just put a little bit of extra water on and just you know move it around and let it wick around for you and this purple is a bit too purple for me, so I'm going to add a little bit of brown into the purple. It's just a little bit too bright, and that's a bit better. So I'm just going to let that do a little bit of wicking. If you think, oh my god, I've got way, way too much on there, you can just use your tissue and just blot a little bit of the colour. Um, bearing in mind that will also move it a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can just blot if you think you've got a bit too much on there you can just blot and then if you think oh I've taken too much away you can just go back over again with um, with the paints again so I'll put that back in that I just took off but it has helped to show some of the uh, blue through there as well so that's helpful okay so I'm just going to leave that to dry um, now before I do any more detail on it because I don't want my um, some of those areas to all smudge into each other so I'm going to be very patient I'm going to leave it to dry um, probably five ten minutes don't use a heat gun because your wicking will just continue to spread as it gets wet so um, just leave it well alone just to sit somewhere on your desk where you're not going to be tempted to move it and then we'll come back to it when it's dry okay so now that it's dry um is the time to add any more color if you wanted to deepen and darken it 
um, I'm going to just take a little bit of black and just kind of add a little bit more around the um, around the edge because I want it to be a little dark around the edges um, not too much just a little bit and then I'm just going to take a little bit of water and then just drag some of that black through because I don't want it to be a harsh line if it's still a little bit wet then it will wick for you but um yeah i just 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 don't want it to be i want it to be deeper and darker but not a harsh line basically and so i'll just clean my brush off and i'm gonna take a bit of gray and i'm just gonna pop a little just gonna fill in this bit of um face area here um it's possibly a little darker than i wanted it but i can blot some of that so I'm just kind of making a little bit of a roundish side there. I'm not doing everything. Um, I don't want to do everything. I'm just mixing it a little bit with the blue, reactivating the blue so it wicks in there because I don't want it to be like a solid colour. And I want, I shouldn't say the word feather when you're when I'm working on a bird, but you know what I mean? I kind of want to feather the edges so it's not a, not a hard line. Um, <laughs> it's a really unfortunate phrase isn't it feathering the edges and I'm just going to fill in a little bit down here as well oh that's funny feathering the edges that's going to tickle me you know that don't you <laughs> oh dear I'm easily pleased I don't want to fill everything in with grey I just want to um, do a little bit A to feather the edges <laughs> but um, also just to give it a little bit of a, a tinge but I'm not doing the whole face as you can see just doing a little a couple of little areas there that's plenty for me and I'm going to see how that goes I might blot some of that particularly the well just maybe not I'll leave it it's trial and error I'm going to add a little bit more grey down here on his belly I want that to be a little bit more mottled. When the watercolour dries, you sometimes lose some of the intensity. But as I say, it's okay. We can just go back over it again. Okay, so I'm just going to leave those areas to do what they want to do. And I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to do his feet. So I'm going to take a dark brown. My brush isn't too wet. And I've just picked up a little bit of colour. And I'm going to use the very the very tippy tippy of the brush where it's the, at, at its thinnest and I'm just going to draw paint in <laughs> some legs really like spindly legs with um, some claws I don't know what they call claws or feet or I don't really know what are they called um, I have no idea I have to look that up because I'm intrigued now <laughs> Oh, I'm just calling them legs and claws or feet. There we go. So I'm just drawing those in. On no particular way, I'm just sort of doing it in a kind of random kind of, it looks like a bird's <laughs> feet. There. Lost the, there we go. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the dark brown and I'm going to bring that brown up into the body again. And I'm going to just going to wash that off and just get some water and then just reactivate some of the other watercolour and then just let that blend out. There we go. He's looking good. Okay, obviously you'll notice that um haven't yet done the beak and the eye. I'm gonna do those last after the um after the face has dried a bit so I'm just putting a bit of yellow in to hit back into here um yeah I'm gonna do the um 
the beak and the eye after everything has dried um because i don't want to muck up the face <laughs> okay so i'm happy with the body now i think do i want to put i might toy with the idea of putting a bit of a darker yeah let's get a bit of darker blue and bring that up here on the top of the head why not just because we can so yeah bring a bit of dark blue up there and that's still wet so it's gonna wick in let's bring a bit of blue in there as well because i feel like we've lost some of the blue he's looking all right i'm pleased with him hope you're pleased with yours this stage Just wanted to bring a bit more blue back in because I feel like we've lost some of the some of the blue. Doopy 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 doo. Okay. Uh, right. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to call that done for the body. And whilst we're waiting for the face to dry, I'm just going to do some splatters around my around my bird, just to add a little bit of interest. And I'm going to use exactly the same colours that um, I used on the bird itself. So I'm just wetting my brush, keeping it really wet and loading it with colour. And I'm just going to put my hand over the bird and then using the brush I'm going to tap and flick just randomly on the page just because you don't have to do this I just like the little detail that it gives um, what should I'm going to change colour you don't have to do that if you don't like splatters or you're worried that you're going to you know ruin it and get it all over the all over the bird or something so not compulsory. Okay, I don't want to do any more. It's at a point where you're kind of looking at it and you're like, if I do more, I run the risk of ruining it, you know. And if you do that, I often find less is more. If you're at that point where you think I might ruin it, just stop. Less is more. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I'm going to just darken up the feet now they've dried a little. So I'm just going to go over with the same colour. Just to darken. Okay. And now I'm going to leave this to dry again before I go back in and do the beak and the eye. Okay, so now it's nicely dried. <laughs> oh. She says I just smudged it a little bit. Okay. It was. I thought it was dry. But if you do smudge it. You can just use a little bit of water. And make it worse. <laughs> and then blot it up. Doesn't work perfectly. You need to use clean water as well. It doesn't work perfectly. But at least it's better than the smudge. That I did have. How annoying is that? Ugh. Just shows you why you want to leave things alone. <coughs> anyway, I don't think it matters too much because we put the splatters around so it's not like it's perfect. And also, there's a little bit here that's over. I could just touch that up if I wanted to. But I'm not going to because I like it as it is. So need to pop the beak in now so i want to choose a a beakish looking color and we just want to paint that in that little gap that you created created there and i've just reactivated some of the black which is fine because i want it to be a little dark in places so that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with 
reactivating your paints. It's it's all about knowing how your mediums work and um, you know learning to work with that basically because you can you know you can use do anything in pretty much any way and you just need to appreciate how your mediums work and how they're gonna react with each other and you know and same with paper like how it's going to react on the paper that you use I've just um, added a little bit more brown to the bottom there because I wanted it to be a little darker and you'll notice this every time you come back to your image you might be like oh I want to just change that or add a bit more colour there etc but um, it's knowing when to stop as well though because um, there's a tendency to kind of go too far <laughs> um, so you just need to know when to when to stop and when to call it a day so I might want to go back and darken the beak once the beak has dried but we'll, we'll just leave that and see but now I want to put the eye in so I just want uh, black and I'm just going to go over this area here where it's dipped there I think that's a natural place to further that for the eye. Okay, so I'm just putting like a little roundy oval in there. And we're going to let that dry again. <laughs> it's It doesn't take too long to dry, but you know, it's worth, it's worth just taking your time. I'm just feathering that... Um, edge there just a little bit I don't want it to run into the brown of the beak but I'm just feathering that out a bit <clears throat> and then just just blot okay so let's leave that to dry again and um, just going to remove another little blob there that I smudged there we go that's gone okay so let's leave the beak and the eye to dry and um, then hopefully we'll be back just to put the last finishing finishing touches on so we'll see you in a bit okay so now um, it's all dry you can just double check that you're um, happy with everything and you can add yet more color if you need to I'm happy with how mine is and um i just want to on the eye add a little bit of a catch light um just to kind of give a bit of a bit of a highlight you could either use like um a posca paint pen or um, a bit of acrylic if you wanted to or um watercolor and the reason i'm suggesting using um, a bit of acrylic or a Posca paint pen or you know any other sort of like a Sharpie or even Tipex um, is if you're not very confident with watercolour and you don't want to um, you know you're a little bit worried about splodging it or it going everywhere or whatever you could be a bit more detailed with a paint pen so I'm just going to just dab a little bit on um, and if I can get my paint pen to work this there we go so I'm just gonna like dab a little bit on and just to give it that little bit of a a little bit of a catch light there so I'll just lift that up so you can see there we go